Now, VOCNation.com, WCW Retro. Be sure to call in Thursday nights, 9 Eastern, on the VOC Nation. I got a condo in Manhattan, baby girl, what's happening? You and your ass invited, so go on and get the cabin. Go pop a phone, pop, pop a phone, me. turn around and drop a phone, drop a drop a phone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the air. It's In the Room on the VOC Nation Wrestling Network, right here live on VOCNation.com and all your favorite podcast providers as well. Brady Hicks here. We've got Kathy Fitz. Kathy Fitz is in the building. Hey, How you doing, Kathy? Happening? Nothing much. It's good right, to be right here. It's, I, I'm, I'm good. I, 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 I'm excited to be here. Got a great guest. We're going to get into that in a minute. In a minute. And uh, some of the gang is back tonight, and I couldn't be happier. We also have the uh, maestro of professional wrestling, Papa Stro. How you doing, sir? Ah, great. Blessed and new, great uh, to be here, man. I finally made it new to Zoom. T- <laughs> yes. And, and you can check us out, by the way, if you just go on uh, YouTube and, and search for Brady Hicks. I, I upload the uh, segments to there since uh, since the um, the premium on Patreon hasn't been uh, as diligent as I would like. So there are still premium content things up there, but I've been putting our shows up on the free YouTube for those to check out. Uh, we also have Ray Bogus. What's going on, Ray? Speaking to you from beyond the void as the disembodied voice this evening rather than having my face there. Brady, you said one of the most ridiculous things ever. We're going to talk about it. As we we're talked gonna, about, as we came right on the show. I was ready to talk some, like, some happy things, share some fun stories, and no. No, you just immediately, that's what you do. You just kick hornet's nests. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk fun things tonight. First of all, and and this is what kind of spawned the entire thing, Kathy. Uh, So tonight, you went out and you got us from Impact Wrestling, the one and only Moose. And Moose is going to be joining us in about 20, 25 minutes. So I'm excited to have him on the air with us. I'm a huge Moose fan. Stro was telling me he is as well. And uh, yeah, what's not to like about the guy? He is just like, he looks like a beast. You know, he goes out there and he's somebody he's that would... Nice, yeah. Okay, well, I wouldn't know that. I only see what I see on TV, and he looks like he wants to kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've been saying how how much I like Impact Wrestling. I mean, I've been watching it every week. Um, my favorite segment, for those who are curious, is Swinger's Palace. I think that uh, Johnny Swinger has done some amazing stuff, Daddy, and you should all check it out. But then I went so far as to say... And the internet people would kill me for this. Um, I like Impact Wrestling better than I like AEW. I do. I wasn't going to admit it on the air, but Ray is going to force me to admit it. Um, I think AEW is very self-serving. I think they spend more time talking about how important they are than showing you how important they are. And I think Impact is in a really sweet spot because they're starting to benefit from getting all that underutilized talent that WWE didn't want anymore, and AEW wasn't willing to swap, you know, to, to, to just kind of swallow up. So as a result, like, Impact's got a great roster right now, and I just feel like they're in their sweet spot. It's a very manageable amount, and from top to bottom, it's a lot of talent there. I'm on board with it, Ray. I, I don't know. Have you not been watching it? Is, is that, I, I don't understand how anyone couldn't say how good it is. Well, so part, remember, I do not even recognize Impact as existing because Derek and I declared it dead. It, well, it, it's dead. You guys are wrong. No, it's dead. Doesn't exist. So number two, I mean, no, Brady, like, like, okay, no, no look, look, if you like Impact, like that's fine. That's fine. Like, th- there's plenty. Of, you're right. There are plenty of good things happening in Impact right now. But I mean, the idea that it's a better product than, than AEW at this particular moment, I don't know. That's a stretch, man. I'm not saying that the wrestling is all better. Although a lot of the wrestling is very good. They had a, 
They had a knockout knockdown pay-per-view tournament over the weekend, and uh, it was won by Mercedes Martinez. I think that tells you all you need to know about a women's tournament. You know, their title match is Mickey James against Deanna Perrazzo. To me, that's fantastic women's wrestling. Then you look at the men, you know, and they've been able to quietly add Matt Cardona. Uh, they've got big casts in there now. Uh, they've got Moose. They've got Eddie Edwards. They, they, they have a tremendous, tremendous talent base. Uh, Rich Swan, you know, it, it, and... I don't know. Like it's just, it's an exciting time for Impact Wrestling. It, they're not dead by any stretch. I mean, some of that I, I say tongue in cheek. I, mean, I I still say that they're. I still say it's a it's a corpse show. <laughs> You're thinking of Dixie Carter. She's gone. Well. I mean, I've said this before on this show. When I think of Impact Wrestling, I think of someone like going deep into the Amazonian jungle and discovering some lost Olmec city. And you just look around at like these monumental carvings on the wall of, you know, of AJ Styles and uh, of, of Kurt Angle and... Uh, at that time, they brought the nasty boys in for like two days, <laughs> and, and and all that, all kind of that heyday. And my problem is that my problem is that continuity, I think, hurts them here, and it's it's just hard for me to be invested in that same promotion now. I, I can understand that, but that era is dead. You know, I, I, that, that, I, that's, I know. Uh, I, but, but this is a new era. These are totally different people. You know, Stro, they had a great segment on us. <laughs> I talked about the Swingers Palace this week. So Hernandez is his bodyguard. So Hernandez yeah. is hanging out back in the back yeah. most of the time. And, you know, they're, they're pulling stuff off the walls. And Hernandez, Hernandez unrolls a poster and he's like, what the hell is this? And Swinger's like, ah, oh, just put that away, Daddy. That just put that away. <laughs> and, and and Hernandez is like, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, Daddy. No one wants to see that or whatever. And Hernandez turns it around, and it's a full page spread of Dixie Carter. <laughs> like it's, just like, it's amazing. It's a, it's amazing. It's just like the writing is so good on there. The the writing is so good. Oh I, uh... my goodness. <laughs> um. By the way, not to change the subject, but I don't know if you guys saw, but Vince Russo, apparently, uh, he wasn't, he didn't say he was drunk, Ray, but, but the equivalent of the uh, late night college drunken text to Vince McMahon, hey, do we got a beef? Why do you hate me? <laughs> Did you hear this? No, it's no. amazing. It's amazing. So Vince Russo, he's talking about this in the interview, Kathy. And Vince Russo says that he he ta he, he messages Vince McMahon and asks what their beef is. Why? And Vince is like, I don't have a beef with you at all. And then Vince Russo says, okay, well, I'd like to put this out there. Um, I'd like to come and evaluate your show and maybe help you guys out. And Vince didn't answer him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and doesn't that, that just kind of tell you that, that, that what you the, need to know that, that is the Saturday Night Drunken Text you... <laughs> in the words of Baron Von Rasky oh, that is all the people need to know <laughs> <laughs> poor Vince Russo I, I, I do think that they could benefit from having him uh, as part of a team but I don't think that He's the right guy to be writing those shows. I think he would take an already bad yeah. product and drive it into the ground. Uh -huh. Hey, well, he already knows? drove Dixie into the ground. And WCW. So. I, I guess, all right. Look, there's a way to send that late night text. Yeah. And okay, here's the thing is that 
hey, what are you doing? Do you want to get together sometime? Like if Vince had, or if, if Vince Russo had said, you know, hey, you know, you know, I'd like to maybe come on Raw, be involved for a little while. Vince probably at least answers him back and says either, you know, you know, hey, let's come out and talk about it at this time or, all right, yeah. here's, here's a type here we're talking about. The problem is that Vince Russo set the equivalent of, hey, you up, question mark, let's screw. Exactly, and, exactly. And... Like he, he yeah, he, he you came have no at no self awareness. Right, exactly. That that's what I mean. It's like that late night college text. Uh, he came at it from a position where uh, as if oblivious to what anybody has said about him over the last twenty years, where, hey, I wanna help you guys. As if he could bring something to the table that would improve their situation. And maybe he can. Like I said, I, I'm not averse to the idea of him being there trying to help them but i don't want him running those shows you know i i i i see what he did in 1998 and 1999 and if that was all him then kudos to him i just feel like he probably had way more help than he ever wanted to admit i think that you know you had jim Cornette there with him i think you had ever, all the ideas had to filter through vince I think Vince was 20 years younger and uh, certainly a lot more like pop culturally aware. I think there's a lot of factors that went into it, but I, I don't think that Vince Russo writing Raw or SmackDown is a good idea. Now, Paul Heyman, totally different story. Uh, I didn't think that they really gave Paul Heyman, Eric Bischoff, that experiment, a chance to even get off the ground. Well, no, they they can't have because if they if they gave them that chance, then it might have proven that it might have proven that parody booking won't work. We can't have that. Yeah. Well, and th and that's what it and and also that you want to push people that you know it don't always got to be the same couple people. There were some names that Paul Heyman was like highly interested in that are no longer on the roster because Paul Heyman's not writing the show anymore. It's a shame, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, I, I digress because Impact Wrestling is a great show. I'm not saying AEW isn't good. Um, I just, hey, you know, sometimes it's about more than just the 30-minute uh, match where the commentators talk about how great the 30-minute match is for 30 minutes. Sometimes there's more to it. I just, I'm sorry, I can't get over this. You, you utterly failed twice to run a show of your own. And you're going to call up the guy who has successfully dominated the wrestling right. industry for yeah. longer than I have been alive. Right. And, and, hey, I wanted to know if you wanted to pay me to critique your show. Right, as if to say Vince wouldn't have already been doing that if that's what he wanted to do. I I got nothing. It's funny. It's I funny. Get, I mean, it's, uh, I mean listen, uh, Jeff Jarrett was under contract with the company up until I think the pandemic. I, I don't remember if he got let go this year or last year, uh, but he was under contract for a couple years there. And creatively, uh, Jeff Jarrett has probably, in terms of like bodies of work and like longevity behind those bodies of work. I would think Chris, I would think Chris Jarrett, I would think that Jeff Jarrett um, was an infinitely better storyteller than Vince Russo. Just based on everything that he did, you know, down in, down in Memphis, everything he did through 
three stints with WWE, everything he did with Impact, starting Global Force. I, I, I Impact was good when Jeff Jarrett was running it. I, I don't, you know, it, it is what it is, and it's uh. Yeah, no need for Vince Russo. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't mind the guy. Like, people really don't like him. He never bothered me. He he never bothered me. But I just, I just like, I think, Ray, I think you put it best. Like, that, that smacks of, like, lack of self-awareness, you know? I mean, there's – I get it. We've all – We've all, you know, had a job that maybe we weren't necessarily qualified for that we really wanted. And we said, you know, we're going to take a shot here. I get mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. I Dumbass. Just a dumbass. <laughs> well, speaking of dumbass, I, I got to mention it before we bring uh... – our guest on in a little bit. Uh, so WWE this week, because of the baseball playoffs, uh, they have to put SmackDown on FS1. It's going to be a huge blow to the ratings every time they go on that network uh, because people don't look for it there, you know? Um, now, I contend that the ratings, how much do they really matter? How many people watch it on DVR anyway or or, or just watch it on demand after the fact? I, I can't imagine that their live numbers are – that groundbreaking, but apparently it's the top show in professional wrestling in the U.S., and that's fine. That's good. So anyway, they're going to take a hit on FS1, uh, but they decided, as part of the fun, Ray, that they're going to extend SmackDown by a half an hour to put it against Rampage, AEW, on, um, I guess it's on TNT or TBS. I'm not even sure where it is, to be honest, because I DVR it. Um, but anyway, so... They're doing that half hour. So now Rampage is doing an untelevised YouTube match um, featuring Brian Danielson. I don't remember who they said it was, but it, it's a really good one. And uh, Tony Khan has gone on record as saying that Rampage is going to beat SmackDown in the ratings this week. Now, will it? Maybe. If, if they're going to do it one week, I would think the week that they're on FS1 not in their usual time slot, I would think, yeah, like, there's a good chance. There's a good chance. But they were like 1.6 million viewers apart last week. That's a pretty big difference. You're not going to make that up. I mean, it, I guess it could get close. I, I just, I, I want to kind of want to grab Tony Khan and say, who cares? Yeah, you're not I mean, posi- I, you're not positioned to go to war with him right now. Right, that's my thing, and and that's kind of where I'm at. Like I, I'm tired of the rest oh! of the company. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind Con. I I don't mind Con. Uh, I I'm I'm tired of the wrestling company that spends most of its program telling me why it's better. He seems like a nice guy. <laughs> he seems okay. Yeah, he seems okay. They're handling Urban Meyer correctly, I guess, right? Well. Jacksonville Jaguars, you know? Well. Take one for the team? (laughs) Somebody in Ohio took one for the team. That's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. It's a mess. I don't know. I, I think you're being mess. look. I I don't think AEW spends as much time as you think they do. It's mostly the punk the punk promos, which I'm tired of, and I want to stop. I don't I don't need them. I don't I don't I don't want them. I have no interest in them. Like Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think he needs to do a promo. Ever. Since he says the same thing every week. That's why I'm tired of it. Like, uh, yeah, I get it. You're happy to be back. Go do something. Yeah. Go, yeah. go now, do he's, something. He's 2-0. Two, two I don't know isn't, if he knew that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. 2-0. and oh. Isn't that nice? He beat, a, he beat a skinny guy who looks like he sits in the back of the class and does drugs. 
and somebody who like regularly loses matches. But you know, hey, he's two and zero, so that's you know that's good. Is, hey, is he wrestling? White. Is he wrestling Marco Stunt next? God, I hope. Yes, Paul White is two and zero, so hopefully he'll get the title shot first. Oh yeah, Ooh. Uh, my dude, Paul White, <laughs> my man, <laughs> my man. <laughs> Leo Rush is on AEW. Yes. He looks the same, except he grew out this, like, cactus coming out of his head in the back. It's kind of weird. I would rather have a Brandon <laughs> Cutler push than a CM Punk push at this point. Brandon yeah. Cutler, yes. How about Christian Cage silently going 7-1 and one with little fanfare? It's almost like they don't value him as a star. I don't know, man. We were told... When he signed, I remember we were told that there was going to be a major signing. Yeah, I, I actually had the nerve to think it was going to be Kurt Angle. No reason to think that. You know, I, I will say, I mean, I so Impact Wrestling back in the day, uh, and there were some huge names attached to it and everything. Uh, they were amazing. But like I was saying earlier, uh, if you guys check out Impact Wrestling today, I think they're sneaky good. I, I think that they have a lot of really great stuff going on. And right now, I want to bring on one of the major stars of Impact Wrestling. Kathy, I love you so much for lining this up for us. You're amazing. We have the one and only Moose on the line. What What's going on, Moose? How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing really good. Right, really buddy. excited to hear from you. <laughs> So we, we have Kathy, we have uh, Maestro, we're all here. And uh, like I said, we're, we're so excited to have you. Um, I've been talking about Impact Moose because I think it's a product that has um, quietly gotten very, very, very good these last couple of years. I, I, I don't know if you share the same sentiment, um, but I think so much attention goes at the big two that I think people are overlooking Impact right now. Do you, do you think that's safe to say? Um, yeah, um, I and I'm not being biased. I honestly, um, truly believe that Impact, out of all the wrestling companies, uh, we produce the best TV shows. It just um, it's one of those things where AEW is new, and um, everybody loves them right now. And WWE is the biggest wrestling organization up there, so obviously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they have a lot of biased fans. So, but if you compare the actual product, uh, our stuff by far is the best TV product. And I and I do totally agree with that. So you've been with Impact, I think, about five years by my count now. Um, just kind of looking at it, Moose, and uh, so, sorry, six years now. Six years. Okay. Wow. Time really flies. I um, but you're you're a guy who could have gone anywhere you wanted. I would think. What kind of went into that decision, not just to sign with Impact, but to to stay with them as long as you have? Um, especially this last contract I just signed with him. Um, I literally could have gone anywhere, like mm -hmm. to AEW, WWE, Ring of Honor, literally any company I wanted to. It was just one of those situations where um. I like the freedom I get with Impact. Um, money is not a big driver for me because I've made a lot of money. I played in the NFL for seven plus years, so I've made. Yes. I've had a chance to make a, a bunch of money, so that wasn't uh, a big driving point for me. Uh, and I, it's a lot of things that I haven't accomplished at Impact that I would like to accomplish, and um, and that was pretty much my my biggest motivation was um, some of the goals I had set, set aside um, and I haven't gotten a, a chance to, to hit yet. So, Well, you, you talk about hitting, and uh, actually one of the fans had asked this. It's the perfect time because you mentioned playing football. Uh, the fan wants to know what was more physical? Was it the wrestling or was it the NFL? Oh, I, obviously the NFL um, is is not even comparison. I hate when it's like okay. it's annoying when people ask that. It's like it's honestly common sense. Like there's a reason why you uh, your playing span in the NFL is three to six, seven years, and 
in wrestling, you could wrestle to like your sixty if you wanted. That's so true. It's like it's that's, yeah, it's a common sense question. I mean, obviously, the sport that has a shorter span is harder. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and on your body, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Now, for me, you know, playing Madden or playing like, you know. SmackDown, whatever, all over. What I don't even know what the game is anymore. But like, you know what I mean. Like, obviously, as a fan, I don't don't think you always kind of are able to associate that kind of stuff. So I I I, I was just I, I mean I'm sure that they were just kind of curious about that. Uh, but looking at everything that you're kind of quietly accomplishing in Impact, and uh, you mentioned that there was a lot more you wanted to do. I would think that impact heavyweight title would be a huge one for you, right? I mean, you've been kind of sniffing at that door for a while. Um, yeah, that was, that was definitely one of them. Uh, and it, it's other things um, that I've, I've, I've never been an exhibition champion. I've never been a tag champion. It's, it's not just a, uh, I mean, the heavyweight is obviously the, the number one title in impact. It's just, um, there's a lot of things and a lot of people I want to get a chance to work with. That I haven't got the opportunity to work with yet, and um, if I was to leave to go to WWE or AEW, I wouldn't get that that chance, you know. So it's um, it like I said, it's an interesting time for Impact for sure. Um, and you for years, you were one of the bigger guys, kind of on that roster. You really still are. Um, but I look at some of these names coming in from, like, for example, WWE as they let get let go. And, like, all of a sudden, Impact has gotten, like, a lot bigger, you know, a lot more physical than I think it used to be, at least as a fan, that's how I perceive it. Um, what do you prefer? Do you prefer kind of that fast-paced style or more like having more of those WWE-type people around that are just really physical? Um, I could do it all, honestly. Okay. Um, I mean, what, I, I, I'm one of those guys that pride myself in being able to wrestle any style you put me in front of. So it honestly doesn't matter. It's just a, a what? It, it's just another day in the office. Whatever I'm told to do that day. Okay. Well, one of the, and you talk about kind of having any style. One of the fans wants to know about your time with Ring of Honor. Uh, how that was? Is that something that you look back on fondly? And um, how much different is it, or was it, than what you're doing now with a, with um, Impact? Um, I also people with Ring of Honor is one of those, like it's one of those things that if I didn't do Ring of Honor, I wouldn't be in the position I am now. Okay. I learned a lot about professional wrestling, and um, and it was definitely it definitely helped with my um, transitioning and. And um, what should I say? And, and upbringing in professional wrestling. So, um, I'm very happy I went through the way that I did, and I went through Ring of Honor. Okay. And another person I know that was very important to you early on, uh, training with Mr. Hughes down there in Georgia, Curtis Hughes, a good friend of ours. Uh, we love the guy personally. Uh, what was that experience like? Is he uh, is he a tough trainer? I'm going to say a tough trainer. Uh, he's a trainer. Uh, every okay. every trainer is tough. I mean, it's their job to be tough. Uh, and, but he, he's good. I mean, without him, I um, probably will be where I am right now. Uh, so shout out to Mr. Hughes. <laughs> I love Mr. Hughes. Total protection. <laughs> uh, he, um. Were you, were you a wrestling fan coming into this, or was it just something that you decided that you wanted to uh, to try? Um, I was definitely a huge wrestling fan coming into okay. it. Mean. Well, that that's cool. I, I So I guess my next question would be, like, all the moments you've had and everything, did you ever get, like, that pinch me moment? You know, like, the, like you just can't believe that you're here doing this? I've had a few of them. Um, you talking about matches wise or like? I mean, just whatever experience. I mean, I, I mean, I, I've had people tell me that standing in the ring at Madison Square Garden was their pinch me moment. You know, I've had other people say like, I got in the ring with like indie legend Mister Ooh La La, and that was like their pinch me moment. I, I think it's different for every person, obviously. But did you have that moment where like the fan inside of you was just screaming? 
Um, probably when I wrestled, when I was in Ring of Honor and I got a chance to wrestle Okada, that was definitely a oh, okay. uh, interesting mm-hmm. moment because I had That's cool. a mm-hmm. big fan of his. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, if you look at my moveset, a lot of things I do is, uh, a, a lot of those things I got from Okada, you know, so. That is cool. That is, that is really cool. And you've done some uh, Japanese wrestling, I believe. I, I believe you have. Uh, how how much different is it wrestling for New Japan or taking on somebody like Okada versus like, you know, what you kind of are seeing most of the time with American style wrestling? Um, wrestling is wrestling. I mean, it's just okay. Different by how you place different moves, and uh, by the end of the day, it's the same. It's the same thing. Okay, very cool. Uh, the, the the different stories that you tell in Mexico and you tell in Japan and you, you tell in America, is, but at the end of the day, this wrestling is wrestling. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so you you talk about wrestling being wrestling, and like as a fan, I can tell you that like there are times when I watch you on TV and you look downright scary. You know, you look like somebody that I would be afraid to be in the arena when you're coming down to the ring or whatever. Um, how much of that is like, like, is that an important focus for you to kind of be that guy that like, I mean, obviously you don't care if people love or hate you so much, but I just, that, that idea of being feared like that, is that something that you ever think about? Um, obviously, yeah, I mean, it's your character. You want to portray the best of your character possible, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think with the character I'm portraying, I should come down to the ring smiling. That wouldn't make too much sense. So, right, uh, right. I mean, yeah, so wh- whatever it takes to portray whatever character you have, that's what you should do. Has there ever been a time when you were scared to be in the ring? Maybe a hostile crowd or anything like that? No. Okay. Oh, not at all. <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't want to mess with you. I can tell you that. <laughs> Kathy said that's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Moose was very nice. He, when I saw him at the convention, you know, Moose is very nice guy. And I really appreciate him agreeing to come on to the show tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Moose. No problem. Uh, Moose, I, I think a lot of the fans, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to say it, uh, because not all the fans are watching Impact Wrestling, and I, and I have no doubt that some will listen to this and maybe tune it in, tune in, they haven't in a while, or whatever, uh, but for people who aren't familiar, maybe give them a little taste for what they're missing if they're not watching Impact Wrestling on Thursdays. Uh, I mean, like I said in the beginning, it is the best wrestling um, product on TV show-wise. Like, um, all our shows are structured pretty good. They all make sense. They're exciting. They're funny. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's hard-hitting good professional wrestling. Very cool. I think and... the reason, uh, why a lot of people don't pay attention to it because we don't draw the crowds that AEW and WWE do, but if you actually tell, like, a director to compare all three shows, they'll, most directors will probably say, man, this product is probably the best. I, I and, and I agree. We were actually talking about it earlier. Um, Impact has become my favorite show every week to watch, and for a lot of different reasons, for a lot of the, the great talent that's on there. Uh, Moose, uh, if we're to look at your career, say, five years down the line, what sort of things do you think you'll have accomplished in five years? Uh, I mean, hopefully several championships. Uh, I don't know. That's all. Hopefully um, several championships. Okay. And made a lot of money um, doing it. Like, like Booker T used to say, the checks and the championships, right? I, uh, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I did have another question actually, and I just kind of thought of it now while you're talking about that. So this year in particular, 
we've seen some AEW talent come in and kind of take that impact title. And, and obviously, I mean, there's not a lot of hostility there, I wouldn't think. Um, but what kind of a message does that send to you guys when an outsider, now in this case, a couple outsiders, are the ones that are holding on to that title belt that you want so badly? Uh, I don't take it personally. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't, I cannot um, stress over something I can't control, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. one of those things that I'll keep getting better and doing what I need to do. And um, hopefully I'll be the guy that they can call on to, to um, carry the company or and to um, be the face of the company or to hold the torch of the company. But, I mean, as for God's mother company holding the title, I mean, I don't, I don't sure. really think about that because it's out of my control. Well, um, I, I was hoping that you would be the one to beat Kenny Omega because I thought it would have been a great story. And I thought it would have been a I, – I, obviously, you guys had a fantastic match anyway. Um, do you think overall that the alliance with AEW has kind of helped your product? Or, or do you think that uh, maybe you guys would I, – I don't know how to put it because obviously you don't – it wasn't a bad thing. But how do you think the alliance with AEW has worked out? I mean, so far, so good. I mean, I don't follow numbers to see how many viewers we get mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. to answer that question truthfully. But, I mean, I like it. it, it, it I mean, if anybody's winning as the fans. Um, for sure, for sure. And, and they're getting opportunities to see guys that haven't been in Impact for a while that they always enjoyed there, in addition to all the great talent that's there now. Uh, Moose, I, I wanted to... Uh, to thank you so much for the time tonight. It, it really meant a lot. And, uh, you know, it, I, like I said, it, it was a great time. The uh, the 15 minutes here that we just did just kind of flew by for me. But, again, thank you so much for the time. Um, I also wanted to ask oh, thanks, thanks, Ryan. It, it was thank great, you. like I said. Thank you, Miss. I, I was going to ask for a favor before... I was going to ask for a favor before you go, if that's okay. Um, I was hoping that we could get you to record a bumper for us to play on the beginning of the show. Would that be okay? Cool. Yeah, sure. Cool. Uh, so the name of the show is In the Room. If you could just tell people who you are and remind them that they're listening to In the Room. We'll have you on. It's called In the Room? Uh, in, the, in the Room. In the Room, okay. Yes. Uh, just tell people who you are, remind them that they're listening to In the Room, and We'll have you on your way, sir. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, this is Moose, and you're watching In the Room. Thank you so much, Moose. It was a real pleasure. Oh, thank you. All right, brother. So that was the one and only Moose from Impact Wrestling. You can check him out. Each and every Thursday night. I, I sound like a bad host now. What show is it? What, is it? what network is it on? I'm going to Google that. Hold on. Sorry. Impact on. It's on the tip of my tongue. I'm sorry. Sorry, Moose. You must think I'm an idiot. Impact Wrestling Network. It is on. Access TV. That's it. Access TV. Thursday nights, 8 Eastern, Access TV. And don't forget that you can also check out. Uh, the impact on demand stuff as well. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break right now, but on the other side, we're going to open up the phone lines. 914-338-1885. It's in the room on the VOC Nation Wrestling Network. In the room, 9 p.m. Eastern on VOC Nation. All right, folks, you're listening to In the Room. Yours truly, Total Protection, Misty Hughes, jamming it out right here on In the Room. Check me out sometimes. I am the man, the only man, who stole the Undertaker's urn. In the room! All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. It's in the room on the VOC Nation Wrestling Network, right here live on VOCNation.com. 
I'm going to see if you can get you back on that. Uh, it's still around. Uh, we're not renewing it this year, I officially decided. Uh, right now, it's on an unsecured uh, WIF site, and nobody goes to it, and it hasn't been updated forever. Uh, people just guard the old website. I was even thinking the booth the other day. I don't know what you guys think about it, what the listeners think, but I, I feel like you almost don't even need a VOCNation.com anymore in a lot of ways because, uh, like for me, I listen to a podcast, right? I go on Spotify or I go on Odyssey or I just Google VOC Nation and click whatever player comes up. You don't necessarily need, aside to have a, aside other than for having like a spot with just like a lot of quick links where you can get to everything that you need. Websites are pretty much obsolete nowadays, wouldn't you say? I mean, that's how I feel. Ray, what do you think about that? Are websites obsolete? I don't think they're totally obsolete yet. Okay. okay. I mean, well, I have nothing I mean, else to really add to that. Like, I don't, I don't think they're totally obsolete yet. It's, it's, it's a tangent for sure. Nine one four three eight eighteen eighty five is the number to get in touch with us here tonight. We'll be here for a little while longer, and you know we'll see who calls in. Maybe maybe we'll have a a good time there. Uh, before we really kind of jump back in, Stro, I know you've been pretty busy. I know you have got some uh, some movie and some TV things going on. Definitely want to hear about all that. <laughs> and uh, preempting WCW Retro this week, I understand. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a crazy week this week. Um, WCW Retro uh, will be preempted till next week. And next Thursday, rather, and we'll and next Thursday we'll continue our discussion um, on the what if scenarios in wrestling. So uh, bring your A game next week, uh, next Thursday night, WWE Retro on DeuceNation.com. I'll be on set this Thursday for an upcoming horror film called The Love Spell. So I'll be on the lookout for that soon. Um, this Friday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time, my horror sci fi show, The Stro Zone, continuing the month of Halloween. On my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Stro the Maestro. And uh, Friday night's feature will be Ride of Frankenstein. So please tune into that. And then Saturday, I'm doing commentary for Shockwave Wrestling's Ode to Manson, uh, doing a tribute show to the, the late Moses Manson, who's a, a brother okay. friend of mine in the business. Um, and the proceeds of the event will go into uh, Moses Manson, a.k.a. Daryl Hall's family. So uh, if you're in the Newburn, North Carolina area at the Craven County JC's Fairgrounds, um, Friday night, I think uh, doors open at 6.30, bell time 7. Uh, for more information, how you can donate to the family and be a part of the show this Saturday, go to shockwavewrestling.com. Okay, very good. I um, I forget what I was going to say. I had something there. Oh, well, anyway, be sure to check out that. I. I, I'm, I'm sure it's a tremendous time, uh, so be sure to go check out Shockwave Wrestling and all the stuff that Stro Maestro is involved in. Uh, so, thank you to uh, thank you to Impact Wrestling's Moose. Is it like terrible to call it TNA still? Like Kathy, I still always want to say TNA. I must have come close about a hundred times during that interview with Moose. Uh, it's it'll always be TNA to me. I think. You know, it would if WWE changed its name to Raw. Well, like, okay, that's the show, but the promotion will always be TNA. I don't know. Yeah, it's always, yeah. Yeah. I should tell you how I got Mrs. Lumber, right? Uh, no. Did you get it from a multi? I'm only kidding. That was stupid. No, we're doing, we're doing a shut up. We're doing the um, convention, and I was driving to the airport to get Kalisto and Buddy, mm-hmm. and Moose calls me. And says, oh, you did tell me this, yeah. She's supposed to be picking me up, and I'm like, no, not me, but thanks <laughs> for the number. Now I got it. There you go. There you go. I got to ask, so you had Kalisto, you had Murphy, and uh, Lana. Which one was your favorite? And Fandango. And Fandango. I would imagine Fandango just danced and um, played crappy music the whole time. No, he didn't say a word. He just sat there. Okay. 
Buddy, Buddy, I become friends with, so it was cool to hang out with him. Mm-hmm. Lana, I didn't know what to expect, but she was very nice. Not a diva? Very nice. <clears throat> no. Okay. I've heard she's great. And Kalisto, you probably dealt with from his time in, like, CCW, right? No. Uh, Kalisto, I mean, it was funny because the promoters contacted him and say, this is the girl that's picking you up. This is her number. Mm-hmm. And all I get is a text that says, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so I call him back, and I went, Kalisto? He goes, yeah. You know, so then I picked Buddy up. And he said, uh, let's let's rip Kalisto. So I called him on my phone, mm-hmm. and Buddy starts talking Spanish to him. I hear Kalisto going, hello? <laughs> and, he, and then Buddy's like, Kalisto, it's Buddy Murphy. Where are you? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, I look forward to, uh, to more guests from those uh, amazing conventions that you've had the last couple of weeks. It's uh, it's tremendous time, but anyway, thank you to Moose for the time tonight, and everybody needs to check out him because it's been absolutely amazing. On the other end of the dial, uh, WWE, we got to get in the obligatory WWE stuff. Now, Stro, you actually brought this to the table, and I had forgotten they're doing the King of the Ring and the Queen's Crown tournaments. I think it's great that the women are getting this opportunity. I have my fingers crossed that Shayna Baszler gets it. I'm really hoping that Shayna Baszler gets it. Um, either her or Dewdrop, I, I think. I, I, I would just, either one, I think, would just be a great uh, great one to hold the Queen's crown. But Shayna Baszler in particular, because, like, she had so much promise when she came up Stro, and it's like they really haven't capitalized on much of anything with her, aside from the first, like, month or two that she was there. Yeah, I... I... I'm I'm a big Shayna Baszler fan myself, and um, I'm I'm really hope it comes down to her and Dewdrop, honestly. Her yeah, final that'd be that'd be but great. The weird thing, so here's the weird thing, and uh, I don't agree with this, uh, but she's facing Dewdrop in the semifinals, mm. and then the winner will be will face the winner of Carmella and Zelina Vega. So unless we get some shenanigans, which I, I don't think wrestling has a lot of shenanigans usually. Um, mm-hmm. I would expect that the winner of Shayna Baszler and Dewdrop will be winning the tournament, I would think. I'll, yeah, I wouldn't bet against it. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. Because, I mean, Shay- Shayna's on a roll right now. Yeah. Now, with that said, you know they're just going to put it on Carmella because she's the most beautiful. <laughs> and she'll have a crown and a mask. A crown and a mask. I was hoping Liv Morgan would get further than she did. Yeah, me too. Me too. That would have been nice. I'm always... It's funny. I'm always pleasantly surprised when people support Liv Morgan, and I don't know why. She's slowly becoming good. Um, She's got a personality. She hasn't always gotten the chance to show it. She certainly benefited from being with Ruby Riot for all that time. You can just tell. That like she got that veteran experience from her, you know the 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 the, the highways and the byways, as they say. You know, I I, I think Liv Morgan's the real deal, and I think she's going to be something for them. It's uh, but again, I'm always surprised to hear people that support her. Right? I think she's good. I do. Um, that that's one side. The other side is the men's, um, and I know it would be so important for Xavier Woods to win this thing. Uh, I mean, he's been talking about it forever, <laughs> forever, about wanting to be in the King of the Ring and winning it. And, you know, they're, they come out, he comes out for his match, and he, he goes out and he, like, he stares at the crown. And he, he's the only one that's playing it up how much he wants this, you know? And it's like, it's just shaping up perfectly for him to get upset in the finals, and it's a shame. Uh, because I think he would be a fun King of the, King of the Ring. I really do. I think Absolutely. I think like the next King Booker. Oh I, gosh, can you imagine if he wins the thing? Oh, it'd be amazing, and the crowd will go nuts. And I think it would solidify 
Um, because I think, obviously, New Day are Hall of Famers. But I think it would solidify that all three of them deserve to be in that conversation. He is the one that kind of is lacking that really big piece of hardware. Yes. And yep. And he's never going to win the world title. That that does seem to be a stretch, yes. No, I would love to see him win it. Me too. Me I too. would You're- absolutely but- love to see him win it. The tournament. The, t- the title or the tournament? No, the, the tournament. No, I don't want him to win the title. I don't want him to win the title. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, he won He won the Super 8 tournament. I know it's not the same thing, but he beat Tommaso. He's at least as good as Tommaso. That's true. Yeah. Stuff is real, man. So, real physical. Uh, yeah, so I, so I, and I'm to, I thought it was ironic that Nakamura relinquished the crown that he wanted so badly without even trying to win it in the tournament. I thought that was a little strange. Unless he's planning on just beating whoever the winner is to get the crown back. Maybe. Maybe, I don't know. It feels like they don't quite know what to do with Nakamura, but they know they can't just leave him sitting in back. Yeah, well, he's lucky he has that guitar guy, because otherwise I think he would be sitting in the back. Doesn't that tell you a lot about the state of that company? Yeah. It also tells you a lot about my fandom when I can't remember the guitar guy's name. Rick Boogs. <laughs> Rick Boogs. Rick Boogs. That's right. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like I, so I got ESPN Plus just so that I could watch NFL primetime because I, I love Chris Berman, and he's paired with Booger McFarlane. What a great name, Booger McFarlane. Uh, we're <laughs> we're going to bring up Derek McDonald. <laughs> What's going on, Derek? <laughs> Hello. Um, not, not, nothing much. I'm just looking through, like, the 20th Tony Khan interview where he's talking about WWE this week. So, uh, yes. as usual, I guess. We got a couple quick hits here. We also have a couple callers on the line. Tori, you're up first. So please hang tight, honey. honey doll. I think it's in real short order. Uh, but there were a couple of things this week that I wanted to mention. We were talking about them earlier, and then we'll jump back in with the king and the the Queen's crowd. Actually, let's start with the King and the Queen since we're talking about it. Uh, thoughts on that, Derek? I said whoever wins Shayna Baszler in Dewdrop, and I really hope it's Shayna Baszler, is going to be the Queen. Yes, you, you got to go Shayna Baszler for the women, and you got to go Xavier Woods for the men just because he's willed this thing in existence over like the last five years. Yeah. So you got to reward the poor guy. He's been talking he, he, about it forever. Yeah, he's the only guy I'm, I'm invested in to win the thing, honestly. <laughs> well, he's the only one playing it up like he wants to win it. Yeah, right. You know? The only one. And I was saying this, Derek, because I think, I, I don't know if you were on the line when I just said this, but um, New Day, obviously, first ballot Hall of Famers. Uh, but I think if mm-hmm. Xavier Woods wins the King of the Ring, I think that solidifies that all three of them could be Hall of Famers in their own right. Yeah, and it it's done. I think who was it? I think it was Ron Simmons who would talk. He was talking about when you have a when you have a stable of guys. The the point of the stable is to get everybody over, so they're in a better position when it's over than they were going into it. And I think New Day is like a perfect example of that because all three guys are doing nothing. And now, like you said, they're probably all first ballot Hall of Famers. So it's an exciting time for sure. King of the Ring, Queen, and so everybody. I, I mean, I, I again, I, I think it's, um, I think it's something to get excited about. Um, we were talking earlier about. We actually had Luke on the program earlier tonight, um, and that dude is amazing. I, I <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Um, but I thought he was going to kill me, Derek, when I asked him what was more physical, football or wrestling. He uh, and it wasn't even my question. <laughs> uh, yeah, he. Uh, what did he, 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 he say? Well, he said like, "Duh!" Like, uh, 
you said in football, you're playing for three or four years, and in wrestling, you can go until you're in your 60s. What do you think? He's got a point. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just thought, and again, like the extent that I have is like video games. So, like, I don't know. I thought they were both very physical and just in different ways. That that would have been my guess. Yeah. Me too, because you know, football it it destroys these poor guys' bodies. Yes, wrestling too. But, you know, you, you, some of the old-timers who used to wrestle, they can still get around, they can still move. You look at some of these old-time uh, basketball players, and they, I mean football players, and they look like, um, Jesus, poor, like, what did you do to yourself? Was it worth it? Except for the quarterbacks, yeah. Yeah, because you, yeah, you can't touch them anymore. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're perfectly fine. No, it, but, but, it, um, no it's... it's um... Yeah, I, I always looked at it like football, you're putting your body at risk, but they're for short spurts. Whereas, like, wrestling, mm-hmm. you have to go out there, and you're taking a risk for 20 minutes straight. Yeah, and <sighs> it doesn't take much. And, and and the thing about wrestling that's crazy is most of the time you're putting your well-being and your health in somebody else's hands, whether they're yeah. slamming you or suplexing you or something like that. So yeah. that plays a big part in it, too. I, I heard you groan in there, Ray. I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying wrestling is worse. I mean, I'm nobody's going to argue. Nobody's going to argue that wrestlers don't put their bodies and lives on the line, but like they also don't load themselves up with thirty pounds of armor and then slam into each other's heads. Yeah, that's true. But in wrestling, yeah. you don't see armor. You oh, you're right. That you're right. You're not. You're not an armored weapon when you're when you're when you're in, the, in a wrestling ring. Sometimes, you're still sometimes only I wish a person. That, sometimes yeah. I wish uh, we did have the armor. <laughs> yeah. Quite a few. Quite a few times. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, all that armor sometimes gives you like this false sense of invincibility where you'll dive into a guy head first. You forgot I have this helmet on. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll be okay. Yeah. How many? But it's it's yeah. rough. Look, look, at I, the, look at the Vince Russo. He put the armor on and still got a concussion from Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> More on yeah. so in a second. I, no, but you're right. Yeah. This guy who like puts on the helmet, and he acts like he's Daniel Bryan flying head first through everything. Like, you're nuts. And you're getting fined for I mean, it. Look, you, you're you're not stupid. I mean, you're an Eagles fan. Look look what, you know, and I'm not trying to joke, but look what the game of football did to poor Carson Wentz, the poor guy. He sprained both his ankles on the same play. How do you do that? That's hard to do. How do you do that? That's that's that's, 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 that's a talent. That guy's still recovering from the sprained brain he got last year, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. I, that's nice. I, I, yeah. I like him, but I always thought he was a bit of a prima donna. And and I think people are starting to see that a little bit. Well, look, he, not to get off topic, he played an amazing game last night. It's just that Lamar Jackson played one of the greatest second halves I've ever seen in football, so I kind of overshadowed with with poor Winston. He's having an amazing year for comebacks, Lamar Jackson, this year. I mean, you you can't argue that for sure. (laughs) But, yeah, it's – and and I'm not trashing Carson Wentz. Believe me, I, the Eagles wouldn't have had the Super Bowl if Carson Wentz wasn't there to win, what was it, 13 game, 12, 13 games for them before he got hurt? Like, it, it just wouldn't have happened. He put them in that position. So, um, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but you were talking about Vince Russo. Uh, did you hear? So, Vince Russo, we, we were talking about this earlier, Derek. Um he uh he did the equivalent of like the late night college text, the booty call, I guess, to Vince McMahon. Have oh, you? Heard? Yes. Are you up? Yes. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. What's our beef? I think he think he. Yeah. Do I have heat? Did he think he was gonna get a job out of that? I think he did because that was his follow up. Was I'd love to, you know, anytime you want, I can come in and as if like. 
we said like he he must be like one of the most least aware people out there. To think that Vince McMahon would want to bring him in with his reputation, with how he basically drove two companies into the ground, I I can't imagine. With that said, I and he's yeah, but he would help the creative team. Sorry, (laughs) he 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 would. It'd be a different it'd be a different voice. I don't know if that they've always said his genius was Vince would filter out all the bad ideas and make them good, but yeah. do you trust Vince at this age to do that now? Like that was Vince twenty plus years ago. Can he do the same thing today? I think they had the right idea two years ago and it's hard to believe it was more than two years ago. Uh when they were gonna do Paul Heyman, Eric Bischoff and Triple H running the three brands. I thought that was the way to go. Because it's three distinct voices. I don't know how they can look at everything that Roman's done. And when you know that it's because Heyman's hands on with him. If you're Vince, how do you not go, hey, Paul, I made a mistake? Yeah. Look at what he's doing with Roman. Look at, like, even the influence that he's kind of quietly had over Brock. How much better he's got. It's uh, it's something. Yeah, but Vince, yeah, so Vince Russo wants back, uh, not happening. Um, I said earlier, we're talking about like AEW and Impact, the Impact stuff in particular, because Moose was on. Um, once in a while, I go for that shocking statement, and I said it off air, and Ray kind of called me to task for it. We lost Derek. Oh well. Let's go to Tora. It's the next best thing. Go on. Tora. <laughs> Sounds like Malcolm's in the background with her. I, that would actually be amazing. That would. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, wrestling is coming back this week. I, I, Stro, you brought this up, and uh, we're going to see the return of Tessa Blanchard, which is pretty cool because apparently she can't get a job anywhere else. Uh, we're going to see the return of AJ Lee, who could probably get a job anywhere she wants, and is choosing Wow for some reason. Wow, it's compelling. It's compelling. I, I, and they're going to be on television. They're not actually going to just be a YouTube property. They're actually going to be on television starting next year. I'm waiting to see what happens here. I'm thinking this will never get off the ground. It just it seems too crazy. I mean, I want to say it's too crazy, but you know, well, whatever. I, I do. I, I want every piece of me, just because of who I am and what I do on this show. I want to shoot this down so hard, but uh, you know what? You know what? Good for the go for it, man. There's a demand for women's wrestling. Is AJ, is AJ like? Um, I didn't read really much into it, but isn't she like uh, in the like one of the office people there now for W O W? I didn't hear that, but I did hear that she's going to be at the commentary table. Okay. She might be. She might be at the desk. I I didn't hear. But either way, I mean, it's a huge name, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I think there's definitely a demand for women's wrestling, and I think. By and large, I think fans are dissatisfied with the women's wrestling that they're getting on TV, at least in terms of what WWE is doing lately. And, and uh, I mean, Impact, they took a right step with Britt Baker, but it still feels like Impact is only capable of focusing on one or two women at the same time. Like we kind of said AEW? it. Uh, yeah, sorry, AEW, yeah. So AEW, like, for example, they have Britt Baker... Now they have this TBS thing, and, and Stro, you think it's going to go probably to Jade Carhill. Um, I can't disagree with that because she's the second woman that they always talk about. They, they can only focus on two at a time. Mm-hmm. Save that way. 
Yeah, yeah. The only other one I think could be Ruby. Right. Yeah. But if they were really going to do it right, they would have divisions and they would use some of those undercard women for the TBS title. You know, I, I, I wouldn't it, mind seeing Statlander take it. Honestly, I've always liked she, her. She'd be, she'd be a great champion for. Yeah, I, I agree. I think she'd be really good at it. And there's a few there, you know, that that it could really do some damage with it. I, I mean, but yeah. there is as big of an AEW fan as I am, there is something to be said that their women's division just does not see. And for it, it's amazing that I'm saying this because I think they actually do a very good job of getting, getting guys airtime and having multiple storylines going at once. But they, my God, they are bad at getting more than one woman going at a time. Yeah. And they're kind of, it seems like they're kind of trying now. Like, like they, they've got a Ruby Riot thing going, and you know they, you know I, take Conti's at least on TV regularly, and that's and that's a beautiful thing, let me tell you. But who was that? Take Conti. Okay. Yes. Now that's 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 the she can be on my TV anytime. Yeah. Uh, that, not a. Not at all boring, that's for sure. No, no, lots of Emmy Emmy award winning performances. Yeah, she she's making me remember how much I how much I like the Instagram brand. <laughs> I'm, I might have to do some research tonight when we get off the air. That you might. That yeah, you might. Would be really funny is if you put on like old timey pajamas, like complete with like. Complete with like the floppy nightcap, and oh, then yeah. every, every time you found a new picture, burst into the bedroom and go, Kelly, Kelly, look at the picture I found. Look at the picture I found. Uh, I don't think I would be long for this world if I did that. God. That's it. Oh, What's come on. Donald asking his uh, wife for to waking his wife up to ask him to cook a steak, to ask her to cook a steak. <laughs> Didn't go over well at home. Okay, but I mean, that's a legitimate request. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I love steak. Wait, what's a, what is showing the picture or the steak? Well, both, honestly. But okay. but like the steak <laughs> one, I don't get because like like I gotta be honest. If some if some beautiful woman, you know, was living with me. And woke me up and asked if she want and said, "Can you make me a steak?" Like the answer is absolutely. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> cooking. What? Why are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? you I know? mean, ideally, like my re my relationship would be like a like a Ponderosa, you know, where they just keep the steak bin full. That's an old reference. Right. Like a like a. What's the new one? The uh, uh, I can't think of what it's Golden Corral, where they keep the, 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 the bin full, you know. That would be a nice relationship. <laughs> it's no better like, way, um, you know. No matter when you get up, there's just steak available. <laughs> right, exactly. Imagine that, like the Pizza Hut Express in Target, you know. <laughs> 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 personal pan there every time you walk by mm -hmm. how long is there couldn't tell you I would, you know what the next time you get her to call into the show and I suppose this is a way to make her never call into the show again the next time you get Kelly to call in I'm going to pitch the idea of Brady's of like like uh, Brady's <laughs> personal steak depot yeah. um, no matter love, when no matter when Brady arises or comes out of the office room, like that steak is always available for consumption. With lots of ketchup. Oh man, be amazing. Mm. Oh, oh wow. God. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we could do like a glory hole where the steak comes through, you know, whenever I need it. <laughs> Just in the wall next to my bachelor bed here. I just occasionally a steak is inserted. Do you get utensils with it, or do you just kind of have to like eat it as it comes through? 
I guess I gotta eat it as it comes through. I, I mean, see, steak is a tough one. You usually need a fork and a knife for that. Uh, I mean, you could, you, you, if, okay, here's the thing. You could get like a sock and that could be your steak sock. And then whenever steak is coming through the hole, you just put yeah. that on like a glove and then you kind of eat it like a big juicy piece oh, of jerky. No. That's not a bit. In fact, I should probably lean line, line the hole in the wall with the sock as well that occasionally gets taken out and cleaned. Otherwise, the steak would probably be disgusting. And yes, yes. Wall. That's that's true. That's very yeah. true. So okay, well, it sounds like we've got the basics for a good plan here. Basics for a good plan. I think we do. I, think we yeah. I have no idea how we went from talking about uh, women's wrestling and Tag Conti to stake hole, but <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah. Now, uh, Ray, I understand you bought a wrestling shirt this week. I did for the first time in years. Woo! It's not the Ravishing Rick Rude Sup Lady shirt, though. No, no, it is not. It is... Um, uh, regular <laughs> listeners of this show, I suppose, might say, who do you like enough to buy a wrestling shirt of? And, and there's a couple here and there. Yeah. Um, but I, I love me some John Moxley. I, he is, he is, uh, he is my wrestling, he is my wrestling love. And I, uh, I, I enjoy him. I enjoy all his work, but I, I got it also because like, I, I'm, I love Big E too, for different reasons, but I love <laughs> right. Big E too. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to give money to such an awful product right now. Yeah, I don't care how much I love Big E, and I and I do. the The Big E celebration rolls on at the Ray Bogus household. I'm happy for him. It's a little weird when he gets that descriptive during promos. It is. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah. But no matter what, like I'm not giving. But I'm willing to give my money to AEW. You know, okay. Yes. So, yes. Sometimes, sometimes there are there are things here and there where I say, yeah, enough. Just, just enough with it. Yeah, enough yeah, already. I I, I was like, actually going to ask. Go, sorry. Go ahead. But I was just saying, like, like, no, but it's it's generally speaking, it is an entertaining product from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to sit down. I don't have to have it DVR'd. I, it's usually on about a 30-minute delay when I watch it, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. And it's an, it's it's so something like that I'm willing to spend money on. Yeah, no, and I think that's great. Uh, wrestling companies need to be supported. Is it a shirt you would wear to the bar? Um, it depends who I'm meeting at the bar. <laughs> okay. Because it is not, I did go with a rather um, understated and tasteful shirt. Like, okay. There's no, like, there's no, like, barbed wire all over the place. There's no giant picture of a wrestler on it. Yeah. You know, you get when their face is on it, unless it's like. I, I don't know. I, not when the face is on it, but I hate it when it's just a profile of the wrestler with their name underneath. It's not that. It um, uh, uh, it's uh, I mean, it's it's very understated, and it would depend who. Like, like you know, if I'm, you know, I'm not going to wear it out with the woman. That's not happening. That's not. Okay. That, 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 I mean, but that's, that's because I don't wear shirts with things on them when the, when I'm out with it's, it's plain colors, like, okay. adult. but like, okay. like, no, a couple of, you know, a couple of friends after work or something. Yeah. It's, it's understated enough that I could do that. So is it a love for AEW or a love for Mox? In there? Um, mostly a love for Mox. Okay. But like, I'm willing to buy it because I find AEW to, by and large, be an enjoyable product. Would you wear the Orange Cassidy yearbook photo shirt? No. Would you buy the Brody Forever shirt? 
No. I might. I wouldn't wear it to a bar. I would wear would, it anywhere. Would you Would you buy an All Elite Bay Bay shirt? No. Okay. Well, there you go. No, I mean, it's it's right combination. You know, it's the right combination. Guy I like, acceptable design was available. Company is not a total dumpster fire. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, now I'm just curious. I, 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 I mean, I have a bunch of shirts, um, but there's one these last couple weeks that I feel like I just can't wear like I used to. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know what you guys think about it, but I have a great Ric Flair woo shirt. No, you can't wear I, that anymore. You can't wear Am I, I mean, am I bad if I wear it? No, I mean, I, I just, I think you're an idiot if you wear it. He's mainstream enough, right? That like I think most people don't know about Ric Flair's problems. They'd just be like, "Hey, Ric Flair." I. The, my surprised. thing is that I think it's I think that its face is just a dorky shirt. It is dorky, but most wrestling shirts are. <laughs> yeah. What about my WWF where one panda is hitting the other one with a chair? Is that dorky? Yes, but in a fun way. I'm going to say WWF with the two pandas is acceptable to wear still. Okay. Okay. I do. I wear all these. I mean, I, well, I haven't worn Ric Flair since the incident. Um, Dark side. By the way, uh, and I said this a couple weeks ago. And with every episode, I cringe more and more. This week is Luna, by the way. Um, Stro, if I'm a wrestler and Dark Side of the Ring comes calling me, I'm running away. <laughs> and, I'm them, and I'm begging them to lose my name. Because hmm. if I'm involved in a story that they're trying to tell, nothing good can come. It's like my grandmother used to say about being out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, nothing good happens after 2. Yeah. Well, they're they're uh, very appropriately proactive name named Dark Side of the Ring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just hope I come out of this liking Luna. I think I will, because she's always been great to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So let's see. So we, we talked about the T-shirts. Uh, how about some quick hits, guys? You want to do some quick hits? Sure. Do we have music? I think we need, like, circus countdown music or something for it. <sighs> yes. Yeah. All right, let's quick hits. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. Da, 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 da. This isn't really like a funny story, but 29 years ago today, wow, it's hard to believe it was that long ago, Bret Hart won his first world title. Mm. That was the match against Ric Flair in Saskatchewan. That's crazy. crazy. I feel old. <laughs> Tony wow. Khan putting Daniel Bryanson on the uh, Daniel Bryanson on the uh, rampage on a on um, YouTube. He is going to be taking on, and I couldn't think of the name earlier. Who is he? Minoru Suzuki. No wonder I couldn't remember. Or, uh, Ooh, or caller, as, caller Steve will not be happy with you. Uh, I just didn't remember who it was. It's not that I didn't know the guy. Uh, you know, if he were in WWE, they would call him Suz Morinuski. So uh, they might call him Spuds McKenzie too. They might. They might. Yeah. And Bobby Fitch too. So I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll it'll be interesting. Uh, how about this one? I, Kenny Omega. CM Punk says about Kenny Omega, and I just thought this was great for so many different reasons. CM Punk says. When I wrestle Kenny Omega, it's going to be for the title, 
and I'm not going to need 30 minutes to beat him. Oh. Very <laughs> talented <laughs> fellow, that CM Punk. Like Mussolini! <laughs> I wonder if he's getting promoted to executive anytime soon. Hmm. Mm. More ice cream <laughs> bars. Yes. Yes. Tony Khan said, and, and this would be the first time that he lied, but Tony Khan said that he is a close personal friend of Bray Wyatt, but they have not talked. There are no what? plans for Bray Wyatt in AEW. But oh, they're close. Okay. Of course. <laughs> okay, here's, here, no, here's what it is. They're close personal friends, and they have actually never talked at any point. Right, exactly. <laughs> How dumb. Sometimes I think people are so dumb. Yeah, that subliminal <laughs> thing going on. I, I think I think Tony Khan has a Bray Wyatt action figure that he's friends with. <laughs> <laughs> like the Lord <laughs> Helmet scene from Spaceballs. Yeah, man. <laughs> Everybody that he brings in, and he's saying he's close personal friends with somebody, and they're not going to be on the show. There's no plans to bring him in. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would pencil him in around Halloween. <laughs> that would be me. And I'm hoping he'll come in as a trick-or-treater for some kind of segment. Yes. <laughs> uh, news floating around, and, and this wasn't confirmed. I I... I I think it probably is Randy Orton, but I can't say it for sure. So a top, uh, they're attributing this to a top Raw star. Top Raw star um, said, like, WWE wanted to break up AJ Styles and Omos. And they were all set to do it. And then this top star in, stepped in and said, he's not ready. Like, you know, keep him with AJ Styles. He'll continue to learn and only get better. Makes sense. I would have rather seen Omos get drafted to the future Endeavored brand, personally, because I don't really think that he brings anything to the table. All right, but he's a big, tall man who smiles largely, so he's got that going for him. Is it bad that I like Great Kali better than I like Omos? I feel yes. like he at least has a personality. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh... Hey. hey. Here's a good one. Uh, Becky Lynch asked for The Rock's permission to use The Rock Bottom at SummerSlam to win the title. Um, mm. Now that I think about it, she used The Rock Bottom to win the title? I didn't even notice. Which goes to show me, Stro, that I think wrestlers think overthink things way more than the fans do. <laughs> uh, wh what name do you think she'll probably give her version of The Rock Bottom? I'm hoping it'll be the man's bottom. <laughs> uh. I don't know. <laughs> what if, hear me out on this, guys. This might be a good name. What if she calls it the rock bottom? That'd be amazing. Oh, my yeah. God. God, it's a crazy name. The Becky bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd do. Do, 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 do. But, but, oh, yeah, the music. I forgot the music. It must have shut off at some point. Uh, so, Dana Brooke, Corey Graves taking shots on her, taking shots at her on Raw last week, making fun of her. Uh, they said she had a lot of the talent and the tools that you needed to succeed. And Corey Graves said, you could give me all the tools in the world and I wouldn't be able to build a house. Uh, <laughs> and he's true to a certain extent, I think. Uh, Dana Brooke didn't take it so well. She kind of went after him on, on social media. So Corey Graves this week on Raw says that Dana Brooke needs to spend more time practicing wrestling and less time worrying about what's being said about her on commentary. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know if it's fun. But that I, is the first and last time that anyone will say the name Corey Graves and interesting in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Dana Brooke called Jim Cornetto, Mark, on Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's had a good moment. She's had her moment. And I'm not, I'm, he probably wouldn't even argue with you about that. That's the funny thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I want to agree with you, Brady. 
I, I do because I want to agree uh, with you, but th there's another piece of me that thinks Jim Cornette would argue with the stop sign. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, oh, by the way, did they, um, because I was kind of looking at the rosters, did they switch all the announcers up with the draft? I didn't even notice that. But now it looks like Byron Saxton's on SmackDown and Corey Graves is back on SmackDown. And I don't see that other guy that I hate anymore. I, I don't know where he ended up, uh, the, the football player. But I don't know. It, it seems weird. And I don't remember them talking about switching the announcers up. Why can announcers get drafted? I I don't I have no answer to that question. But yeah. since you mentioned Byron Saxton, I would like to mention Bizarro World Brian Saxton. Where is David Otunga? <laughs> you know, I just I just um I just connected with David Otunga on LinkedIn, so I'm hoping it's going to reveal some stuff. We'll uh, we'll see about that. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> furthermore about the draft uh, why is it like if you have the chance to draft just one member of a team or an entire team why would you decide to only draft one like if New Day is a faction why wouldn't you take all three if you get a three for one pick um okay I'm gonna I'm going to spitball here. Here's here's why I think it is. Now this will, guy. If anybody from WWE hears this, we're going to be in hot water. Um, here, no doubt. here's what I think. Um, <laughs> a long time ago, Vince did. Vince had one tag team breakup go really well, and uh, he has never been able to move past that. Like a guy. Like a five that gets like a five that's dating a ten and then and then suffers a breakup. Yeah. Ever been able this has never quite been able to put that behind him. It's Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart's fault, because he'd never got over them two. You know, there was there was a long standing joke that Vince McMahon was drunk at a bar one night with a bunch of the main eventers. And he said, I can make anybody my star. Any of you guys are irreplaceable. And they said, pick any two people. So they picked a random guy from the Hart Foundation and from the Rockers. And he made them both stars. I don't know if that's true. It sounds a little far-fetched. Uh, but I think it makes for a great story. Uh, Vince McMahon is obsessed. With Look, he broke up the Dudleys. You know? He made Devon a reverend for some reason, briefly. Um, he, he did Batista, too. He did. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. He did. Uh, anyway, I want to close it up with a really quick, funny uh, kind of Drew Drew McIntyre story. He was talking about when he was pretty young on the roster and he went to grow a beard straw for the first time when he was growing his beard. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker came up to him and the Undertaker said, I've got more hair on my ass than you've got on your face, boy. <laughs> I think that's tremendous. <laughs> I think that's tremendous. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get out of here, I'm going to go to uh, Trenton, New Jersey. We actually have Rat Boy on the line. What's going on, Rat Yay! Boy? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Yay! Hey, I've been busy, busy, busy. Come on, you know? Keyword. I'm a busy guy now. What's up? It's hard for me to get get on the show now because I'm busy. Well, what are you doing that you're so busy? Are you collecting stamps? No, bingo. Collecting bingo. Mm. I won. I won. I won nine hundred Friday night. Nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred. I won two jackpots. Two jackpots. Awesome. Two jackpots. Yep. Sounds good. Two jackpots, buddy. How much was that for? And I can't... Huh? No, that I'm only playing. Uh, I, I only got... Uh, let me see. It was $10 to get in. No. Yeah, $10 to get in. So you won 890 seconds. You won $890. Yeah. You spent 10 to get in. Did you buy any food? Yeah. No, I bought it on the way there. On that subway. 
Okay, how much was that? Meatball sandwich. How much was that? I don't know. My mom bought that. Okay, so that that's a positive gain then. Um, all right, cool. Nice. So, so uh, you had a call in. I, I know, hold on. I'm telling you, man. WWE is really oh. getting screwed up hold on, hold on. Rap boy, I'm telling you that you playing bingo on Friday night doesn't mean that you're too busy to call in on Tuesday. Yes, it does. <laughs> Every time I go, I go to bingo on Tuesday. I, I call uh, on Tuesday night. You ought to call us from bingo, or better yet, yes. yeah, I, you want to go and play bingo with I you. Call I'll bingo. I, I I call two games every night. Okay. And they give me the, the t- two dash two dash games. Okay. I'm just getting home now. Well, we're just getting ready to go to sleep for the night, brother. I know. I tried to call you up last week. You was gone. I caught up this morning. You was gone. And you know, this is the yeah. holiday treat now because it's the holiday season coming up. You know, Halloween, guy. We got Thanksgiving. <laughs> really? We got no. Christmas. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and any other That's holiday a spoiler there. Coming. Rap, yeah, ain't it? Rap, boy, do you still watch Impact Wrestling? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, I watch it, and I like it. What's your favorite company? You're a WWE guy. Why My am I favorite in? company? Oh. It's got to be AEW now. Really? Yes. Who do you like better, Tay Conti or Alexa Bliss? Come on. I, I like Alexa Bliss. Come on. I, I, can't, I can't lie. I love Alexa Bliss. Okay. I like her character. Me too. I love her character. <laughs> yeah. Very well rounded. But 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 there's another character that I like on AEW that's Thunder Rosa. You know, I like her too. Yeah. 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 I like her makeup. They're the two I like. Okay. All right, brother. Well it's been a pleasure. Yeah. So two weeks ago we were off. And then I got a spoiler alert for everybody. Okay, I'm not sure it's going to happen. It's going to might be true. All right. Alberto Del Rio is coming back to the WWE. I'm going to see him to the Royal Rumble. I didn't even mention it because I don't believe that to be true. (laughs) Well, I'm mentioning it, and that's a spoiler alert. But you know what? He he is the only one that insisted that MVP was coming back when I told him no, no, no. He was right. There's a rat rumor. It's a spoiler. I'm not saying it's a spoiler alert. I'm not sure yet, but I, I will have more details in weeks yeah. to come. On okay. him. In weeks to come, Rat Boy will fill us in on that story. Hey, brother, thanks for calling in, man. Anytime, man. I just want to say, hey, yo, I'm still alive. I'm still here. Yeah, nope. I'm busy, busy, busy. Kicked out Boom. of me. I'm out of here. Rap Boy, give your parents my best. Love you, brother. Hello. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. And that was the incomparable Rat Boy. Ray, did you have anything you wanted to mention before we get out of here? I love all of the Stroh's extracurricular activities, and I cannot wait for him to let us know where to join him throughout the rest of the week. Yes, please. Uh, Stro, hit us with it. Okay. Well, this Thursday I'll be on set for an uh, upcoming horror film called The Love Spell, and uh, WCW Retro will, will return next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with continuing discussion of what if scenarios in wrestling history so please bring your what if game next thursday uh friday night the stro zone midnight Eastern standard time facebook.com slash stro the maestro uh the friday night midnight feature will be bride of frankenstein this saturday i'll be doing special commentary for shockwave wrestling's ode to manson proceeds the event will go to uh, manson family um their hall family uh it's at the Craven County JC's Fairgrounds in Newburgh, North Carolina. For more information, how you can donate and for ticket information, go to shockwavewrestling.com. Uh, breaking news, actually, uh, I will be part of the upcoming WrestleCade event in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Benson Center 
um, with the uh, artist known as the Sheikster. Uh, we'll have our own table there. Wrestlecade, come see us, uh, November 26th to 28th. And for right. more information, for more information, go to wrestlecade.com for more info. And uh, the Devil's Daughter, uh, which I'll be starring as Dr. Arkhamen, will be premiering on Halloween. So be looking up on that. It'll, it'll be preparing the Halloween um, online at the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Real Devil Slaughter. So look, hope you guys enjoy the film. All right. Thank you to Moose for calling in tonight for Impact Wrestling. Be sure to check in that each and every Thursday night on Access TV, along with all the other great stars of Impact Wrestling. Right there, Access TV. And uh, thank you to all the callers. Thank you for the best view I could ever ask you. Happy Stro, Derek, Matt, Ray, all you guys are just incredible top notch. And you just make the show so much fun for the East Coast. It, it felt good tonight, Stro. We've been in a fun for the couple of weeks. So we got back at it a little bit tonight. It's really good. Um, don't forget ECWA returns November 6th. That we will be dug out in more than one That's going to be ECWA. Super class with Mr. Ulala, still the champion, going to be taking on the returning, a very good professional wrestler, a very good professional wrestler, formerly Dasher Hatfield, who hasn't been in the ring since breaking his ankle at the Super 8 tournament back in April. So it'll be a great thing to see a very good professional wrestler back in the ring. And check out all the stars at ECWA. Check out the information available via ECWA Wrestling. Got, um, that's going to do it for tonight. But everybody, be sure to check out all the other great shows available on the OCAC.com. Be sure to check us out on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe on the Patreon. Buy a shirt on Pro Wrestling TV. That's your VOC Nation. And, uh, again, that's about it. Everybody have a great week. We'll talk to you real soon. I love you all. Bye-bye.